and Belinda oh, from Shot and Mahai and Misty, and Misty the Dog. The dog. <laughs> we, uh, thank you very much for watching our little films. It seems that some of you have really enjoyed seeing what we've been doing in the Chateau kitchen. We thought today we would show you some more of what we're doing in the kitchen. We're going to start um, this little film in the garden. Yeah, we thought it'd be a good idea to start up and show um, what's happened to the seedlings that we've been bringing on and, and transplanted into the patches we've made in the garden now. So everything's coming on lovely. It's coming up roses. No, oh, it's coming up, coming up tomatoes. Tomatoes. We're going to then focus on one very specific product from the garden. All will be revealed later. Shall we go off? Yeah, come on in. Let's go. See you in a bit. Bye. We're up in the potager. Uh, some of you might have remembered this pretty little greenhouse was stuffed full with little seedlings. It's now empty. If you look behind Lee, he's going to show you. I'm here in the background. He's there. Lee's filming. Just minding my own business. You will see where those seedlings have gone. Hey, that cat. What's that We've cat doing? He's digging up my tomato. Um, Wait, get off. Using your Get off! Bed as a it's using my your tomato bed. bed your tomato a, look, bed. it's gone crazy. He's climbing <laughs> up the tree. He's mental. We've planted <clears> pretty much everything, and what we haven't planted, we've decided we're giving away to friends because genuinely we cannot bear to plant any more. We've got courgettes. That's celery leaves, isn't it? Yep. Carrots. Salsify. Salsify. More carrots, radicchio, tomatoes, 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 and green beans, green beans, peas. I'm going to head off through the potager. To my right is the rhubarb patch, which has replenished itself, as you can see, and is now accompanied by. <laughs> Courgettes and tomatoes. We've got more in there now. And there's more courgettes. We didn't know what to do with them all. And if you follow me through the garden. Oh, hang on a minute. <clears throat> I just want to show everyone your prowess of your plum cot tree. My one plum cot. And you've got one, one plum, and there it is. Ta da! Whole tree for that one plum. <laughs> Unbelievable. If you follow me, follow me. Yeah, the potatoes are doing all right. The potatoes to my left. The new potatoes are coming up nicely, Lee. Yep. At the front and at the back there. Yeah. Looking forward to a fine crop. We're now going to head over to one of our seven cherry trees. When I was planning what to showcase in the Chateau kitchen, I thought to myself, I know the next thing I'll do. It's cherries. They were the next thing to crop. We've got seven cherry trees here and in the past we've had so many cherries we haven't known what to do with them so I thought perfect. However, when Lee and I decided to have a little walk around the estate yesterday, we discovered only one of our seven trees has actually really produced any fruit and this is it. There is fruit on one or two of the others, but it's so high up, only the birds are going to get it, I reckon. Well, the birds are going to get pretty much all of this as well, because if you see up there, it's so high up. So what are we, you doing, Belinda? We picked nearly all of them yesterday. I know, we've got loads we've of them. We picked everything we pretty much could that we could reach from the floor. Uh, we've got a, I reckon we've got half a kilo. I don't think we've got very much. We was actually quite lucky because, um, a friend of ours, Mike, who lives just down the road, he's got a cherry tree that's fruited really well. In fact, they had so much fruit, they asked if we wanted some, and I said yes, so I went over there a couple of days ago and picked some fruit from theirs as well. <laughs> I've just eaten that cherry, it's very nice actually. We're gonna head down to the Chateau kitchen. Uh, we're gonna show you what we've made with the glut of cherries our lovely neighbor gave to us. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with a few cherries we picked from this lovely tree yesterday. So come on, follow me through to the kitchen. Hello, Misty. These are the cherries we picked yesterday. And if you look, there's actually three strawberries in there. I didn't want to waste them. I thought I'd pop them in. 
what I'm going to cook today as well. Here's the cherries. There aren't that many of them. Uh, I've had an idea of what I'm going to do with them today. Um, we have guests coming for lunch and I don't have a dessert. So that's why I need to think of something to do with them. What I'm going to do is show you... You better you... get a wiggle on because they're going to be, they're gonna be here in an hour, hour literally. Time, so I really yeah. don't have very much time. I know. I've How got long to... is this going to take to do this? I'm going to really work as fast as I can. I want to show what we've made with the glut of cherries, literally, that our lovely neighbours gave to us. Actually, they're, they're a couple who are coming to lunch today. Yeah. So I, I, mean, I would love to show them what I've done with their cherries, but I'm going to show you first. I can show you what I've done with my portion of Lee the cherries. was apportioned some cherries Watch to do this. something with. You're like this. They're gonna, yours are going to come last because mine are prettier than yours. <laughs> you won't be surprised to see that I've made jam. However, if you look at it, I'm, it's not set properly. It looks beautiful. The cherries you look need to take it back a bit. You can't fresh, it. pink oh, better, and yeah. lovely. Yeah. However, I'm not happy with that. I'm going to re-boil um, that and get a better set and then I'll repot it. But look, it's made absolutely loads. I think I used about two kilos of cherries. I also made, and this is a first for me, I made cherry yeah. chutney. And this is a chutney specifically to go with curry it's got oh, it's nice. spicy so it's got quite a lot oh, of spicing yeah, in that. it i think uh, that'll be very enjoyable and it's something new i make chutney with tomatoes i make chutney with rhubarb plums i thought why not cherries so i've done that as well um, belinda i can't help noticing but you look like you're letting your standards slip because None of these have got their little woolly hats on. I haven't have had you time stopped to, making I woolly no, hats? No, I them? haven't, but I really haven't had time to make woolly hats because I've been making so much jam that the woolly hats will have to come later. Not forgetting the cherry ice cream, which was delicious, and we actually served at the other evening with some hot chocolate, chocolate sauce yeah. laced with a cherry liqueur. I'm going to show you. I'll get that out of the freezer. Yes. I've labelled that one. This is very hard at the moment. It would need about 20 to 30 minutes, probably, out of the freezer. 30 Delicious. seconds in the mic. Delicious. Or in the microwave. That was really nice, yeah. That was really yeah, good. we had some too. Now, show what I made. Show I'll my show, mate. You can show them what you made. Right then. So, what I've made, and I think you'll be very interested in this. Lee's very interested in it. Now, don't be put off by the colour. It looks like pickled onions. No, these are cherries pickled in gin <laughs> pure gin <laughs> and in four months time I, I can almost smell it i'm gonna have cherry gin and tonic look and just to make sure i've got enough how I much can, did you make well i made what happened was i went to the local supermarket and they did an offer on gin and they did a 70 liter uh, uh yeah 70 centiliter bottle of gin for nine euros so I bought two of them and I used one and a half to make um, three jams. So how much are those jars? What's the size of the jars? These are um, 500 centilitres. So I've got one and a half litres of gin. So how did, you, how did you make that? Um, cherry right, basically what I did was stone the cherries, um, put the cherries uh, equal amounts, 200, uh, 200 grams each in a jar. And then I took... Um, 45 grams of uh, sugar and poured that in and then the best bit I just poured a load of gin in and I've been shaking these for the last couple of days just give them a shake once a day so Ooh, how long have you got to wait till you can drink that uh, that's the downside I've got to wait mm. four months before I can drink it so, so I'll have to have normal gin until I can get this this baby's released <laughs> today I've decided to make a cherry cluffy tea I've not made it before so you'll be the first to see this go right or wrong. Um, a clafferty is a um, dessert typically made with cherries. You can make it with all sorts of different fruits. If this works well today, this could become a, a staple at Chateau Mohai using the lovely fruit we have here in the garden. But today I'm going to try it with cherries. And the first thing I'm going to do is put the oven on. Thanks Lee. He's washed the cherries, taken the stalks off. There's about, there's roughly 500 grams there. To be honest, I could do with a few more. It is what it is, uh, and that will have to do for dessert. So Lee's going to stone those in a minute, and he's going to showcase a new, new implement he's bought, especially this for time I've got a gadget. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what I'm going to do first of all is pop this dish in the oven to heat through. 
Lee, so tell us all about your new toy. Right, this is such a simple thing. Last year, what happened, we had seven cherry trees all producing fruit and uh, no stoning device. So <laughs> do I you to, remember what we did? I had to cut them all out by hand and it was such a boring thing to do. <laughs> we ended up ripping them, tearing I, I them, just, do you remember? I got sick of cherries in the end. <laughs> so this year I promised myself to get a stoner and here it is. My new stoning gadget. How much now, did you pay for that? This cost eight euros, right? Daylight and it's, it's all dishwasher friendly. Great. Right? It's a piece like of it. plastic a rubbish. Of right? No, it's not rubbish. It's really good. Watch. Right. Demo. I've, I've already done this when I was making the, my gin. So you just take a small low lit bowl and put the overhanging piece here. And then basically... Oh, I've got strawberries in there as well. Don't, don't, don't stone those. Don't stone the strawberries. Did you know that the pips on, of strawberries are on the outside? I think they're yeah. one of the only fruits that have their... Look, this is that, what you do with it. Like, you just go like that. Okay. And what should happen, it should flick up and come rolling down that shoe so like you... that. And it does. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> it did the other day, I promise you, it worked. What I've done is to put 40 grams of butter into that dish in the oven and I'm going to leave that to melt and get all hot and bubbling. But uh, I'm going to make the batter now. This is so simple. Literally, you just put all of the ingredients for the batter mix into the food processor and whiz it up together. What I've done for this recipe, it said four to six, but I've got six people coming for lunch today and they're quite hungry people. So I've upped the recipe by... Um, 50%. So I'm going to put in, uh, I've got my three eggs, here we are, three eggs, into the food processor. One, two, three. Three I cracked earlier. I've got 75 grams of uh, plain flour, 75 grams of caster sugar, and I've got 300 ml of milk and cream mixed together. I didn't have whole milk. You could just use 300 mils of whole milk, but I had semi-skimmed. So I added some cream to make it a bit richer. So you just pop that all into the food processor. Where's the lid? Oh, there it is. And give it a whiz. I think that's finished now. Didn't take very long at all. I'm going to go and get the dish with the butter out of the oven. Just over here, let's have a quick look. Oh yeah, that's lovely. That's all nice and brown actually. Just going to pop that over there, do excuse me. It's in the bottom. Turn the oven off. Oh no, leave the oven off. What am I talking about? This is because we're in such a rush because these guests are coming really soon. So what I'm going to do now is to um, put the cherries. Thank you for stoning those by the way, Lee. Oh, can you hear them? Yeah. Sizzling, that's lovely, that's a lovely sound. I'm just going to move those around a bit in the hot butter. Mm, yum. It smells great. Doesn't it? It's a shame we haven't got smell of vision. <laughs> and then I'm going to pop the batter on top. This is like a giant um, sweet Yorkshire pudding, isn't it, really? I suppose. <laughs> I never thought of it like that. Yum, yum, yum. So the clafferty's in the oven. That's going to take about 35 minutes. I will take a look at it probably at about 25 minutes. Um, but I thought while that's cooking, I would tell you a little bit more about what I've already made with the cherries that our friend had so kindly given to us. And again, I think of interest is actually how much making all of this has actually cost. And again, I think you'll be very surprised with the results of that. All of this jam, and there's a lot of it, there will be a bit less by the time I've cooked it down. And my gin. And your and gin. And my gin. I will be talking about your gin in a minute, Lee, but okay. your gin can come last, I think, because I think the jam's more important. It's typical. All of this. So all of this jam, uh, this was two kilograms of cherries. This was uh, 250 mils of lemon juice and two kilograms of jam sugar and that costs me in total about four euros fifty that's about four pounds for all all of that jam there incredible cherries on top of course cherries were free yeah so how many how many jars have we got you've there got then? two four six eight you've got ten 
that will probably be about eight or nine by the time I've re, re, recooked it, boiled it down a bit. So four pounds for, for nine, all of that. For nine jars. So about fifty pence a jar. Yeah, probably. that's really it's good. Not bad, is it? No, I know. I know the um, the gin. I bought two bottles of gin because it was yeah. on an offer. They were nine euros a bottle. I've used one and a half bottles, so that's thirteen and a half euros. The cherries I got from Mike, so they were free. And you, you I, I, priced it really accurately. Yeah. Do you know how much I priced it at? No. Thirteen euro seventy for that. Those mm. three. That's one and a half liters. Um, that works out in sterling about twelve twenty-five. So that's pretty good. I think that's going to be absolutely delicious. I think I should try one now. Pickled onion cocktails. Now you know it's not ready yet. You can't have it yet. You've got to wait four, three months. Four months is a long um, more to that's wait. That's going to be pretty much the end of the summer but <laughs> you can have that oh. shame about that isn't it gin season's we'll over move on to winter. chutney please lee i've got to find a quicker way of accelerating <laughs> this process <laughs> let me talk about that chutney that's nice spicy chutney that literally those three jars under a euro seriously for all of that all three jars under all a euro jars under a euro 30 cents plus yeah. the cherries of course a euro well. and that is was about pence, let me see um this was an american recipe actually that's, that i found it's about 25 no 27 Four. pence a jar yeah pretty good isn't it yeah it's really good is that? you've talked about the gin and the ice cream i can carry on talking about the gin if I you know. want that delicious ice cream cost two euros 40 to make oh that was really nice that think. was a revelation actually for me there was a couple of new ingredients in there that i've not used before in ice cream which was balsamic vinegar that's a new one there was vinegar in ice balsamic cream. balsamic vinegar to <laughs> ma the, so those cherries were literally macerated in lemon juice sugar and balsamic vinegar for about half an hour and then I used as, as the creamy ingredient, I used some single cream, but also I used a tin of condensed milk that I happened to have in the cupboard. And I couldn't think what I could use it for except for banoffee pie. So I used it in the ice cream. Absolutely delicious. And now, so that's if you would have told me there was no, condensed milk that. and balsamic vinegar, never, I wouldn't have tried it. No. That, would you? I've got to be honest, I wouldn't have. I would and have it was absolutely. Give me some walls any day. <laughs> I'm just going to go and see if the clafferty is ready. It should be. The big reveal moment, believe so, me. This could do you remember be the it. last big reveal? The last time we did this, Ooh. it was an absolute disaster. Actually, you see, once again, I think that's going to... Can you see it? Yeah, but I, I want to see it out. But I, but I can't get it stuck. <laughs> I can't get it out. The clafferty is stuck. <laughs> well, Gordon Ramsay doesn't have this problem. Oh dear. You know, it needs a little... I think it needs about five minutes more. Right, see you a bit, see you in a bit. Take two. So it should be ready now. Let's hope I can get it out of the oven. What's that on the floor? Piece of a doily. Right, let's have a look. Right. What's a reveal moment. Oh no, this is can. much better. This is much better. But it's getting it out, isn't it? I don't know why it's these oven gloves. Oh, look at that oh, wobble. Wow. wow, that looks good. Isn't that lovely? Hold on. Close the oven. Yeah. I'll take it over here. Take it over. Oh, that's really fabulous. I'm really pleased with that. That's the first time I've made it. So what will happen, Lee, that will, um, it will go down. And actually, as it cools, apparently it turns into quite a sort of, like a flan-like texture, like an egg custard oh, type of fabulous. texture. I think it's going to be delicious. Looks fabulous. And what, what you do when it's cooled down is um, decorate it with some sifted icing sugar. And you're done. We hope you've really enjoyed our tour around the cherry orchard today. <laughs> uh, it's been a whistle stop tour. And seen um, one plum cot. <laughs> <laughs> one plum cot, uh, 100,000 tomatoes and a gazillion courgettes. Just wanted to finish off by saying, um, I've really enjoyed doing this. It's such a challenge, getting a load of fruit for free, for nothing, nothing, and then turning it into something delicious. Um, and just wanted to say that the whole lot that I've cooked today, well, and including Lee's pickled onions. They're, they're going to be the best cherries gin, you've ever drunk. Um, the whole lot, UK sterling, was about £20. And obviously the, the gin accounted for most of that. And yeah, uh, the cherries were a gift 
from our neighbours who've literally just turned up for they've lunch. Just turned and up. And we've got to go and give them a drink and we've got to go. So thanks <laughs> this so much. Mad here. This is watching. mad. Why are we doing this? Okay. We'll see you next time. We've got more coming from the Chateau Kitchen and our lovely kitchen garden. Oh, and I'm going to do a history thing on the tower and the chateau. That's true. I've done a lot of research. See you soon. Bye, Bye for now. Thank you. To you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear guy. Happy birthday to you. Anyway, I love a lovely lunch, um, and and these are our friends here. Um, it's Di's birthday today. Um, and we're going to eat the cherry claffy tea that you saw me making earlier on. Hope they enjoy it. Mm -hmm.